called the government's bluff. Excellent response. Exactly what the constitution calls for. They are not just delaying, they are filibustering. They are sending back and forth. If somebody is gay and you don't like it, he has expressed views on pending issues, highly opinionated and selectively critical on social media. This is the objection. What would you expect a lawyer to do? Every judge rather has a backstory as a lawyer. The Supreme Court will not tolerate this kind of behavior, disgraceful behavior. Then the vice president attacks the basic structure of the constitution. Even a first year law student knows, parliament is not supreme in India. The constitution is supreme. Rational criticism of the collegium system, it's not been transparent. Should judges appoint themselves? But what is the alternative? It's very clear they want to pack the judiciary with people who think uh, along their lines and support basically the Hindutva ideology and the Hindu Rashtra project, or at least not stand in the way. Hello and welcome to the News Minute. Last week, the Supreme Court of India, the collegium, had put out certain statements in public about the deliberations and discussions that took place between the collegium and the government on appointment of judges. Uh, the, earlier, the collegium had uh, recommended certain names uh, for appointment of judges at uh, the Madras High Court, Bombay High Court, as well as uh, the Delhi High Court. The government had raised uh, certain objections uh, and the Supreme Court has uh, dealt all, with all these objections in a point by point manner. And all those uh, discussions were uh, uh, released in a form of a statement uh, uh, by the Supreme Court. And this pushback by the Supreme Court is seen as a new standoff between the judiciary and the government. To talk about uh, uh, this issue, I have with me the former editor-in-chief of uh, the Hindu, Mr. N. Ram. Thank you, sir, for joining us. So how do you see this move by the Supreme Court, sir? I think the... Supreme Court has done extremely well. The three senior judges, Chief Justice Dharanjay Chandrachud, Senior Judge Justice Ch Sanjay Kishan Kaul, and Senior Judge Justice K.M. Joseph. I think they've done extremely well to call the government's bluff because you've witnessed uh, uh, attempts from no less than the vice president to pile on pressure on the Supreme Court. And then the law minister uh, stating the obvious, a banal statement that the judges are not, don't go, have to go to elections. Mm -hmm. And then trying to soften them up. That's how I see it. And uh, this has been counterproductive uh, because this, this has, uh, I think, uh, compelled the Supreme Court to come up with a clear challenge uh, laying out before the public, first about the legal community, students of law, and then the general public, politician, uh, everyone interested in politics, uh, and uh, the health of our institutions, uh, uh, what the issues were. And uh, for example, take the case of, uh, you know. Saurabh Kripal. So, uh, Kripal. Uh, that is Bombay, isn't it? Uh, it's Delhi High Court. The Delhi High Court, he's gay and could be biased due to his open support for gay rights. Partner is a Swiss national. Hmm. And the response, very correct, unconstitutional to discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. And in fact, would add diversity to bench. Foreign partner, not threat to national security in light of friendly relations with the country. So I think this is, uh, this is an excellent response exactly what the constitution calls for and the law calls for. Well done, Supreme Court. The but but don't, don't you think that, uh, you know, the objections that have been raised by the government are appalling because uh, it's about judges appointment. So one would have expected that uh, the government, uh, you know, should have come up with uh, uh, some, uh, you know, very tough arguments or uh, if they are raising objections, then it has to be valid. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, raising objections on uh, a person's uh, sexual orientation. Don't you think that, uh, you know, all this matters, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in this procedure? Yes, it is, I think, quite disgraceful that they'll, they'll put this, this kind of objection on paper, which is uh, outrageous. Uh, or take the other case, the Bombay High Court. He has expressed views on pending issues highly opinionated and selectively critical on social media. This was the objection. What would you expect a lawyer to do? A lawyer has to educate the public. The lawyer has to uh, for, try to influence public opinion in the right direction to comply with the law. 
to comply with the constitution. If you find something not there, uh, it's there. Every lawyer has a backstory. Uh, every judge rather has a backstory as a lawyer uh, once upon a time. And that lawyer uh, would have done various things in his life. He may have been in politics at some point as a young person or even later. And there are many such cases. He may have had debates. He may have figured in controversies. He may have enriched, uh, you know, people's information on what, what has happened and hold it against them. Uh, is just disgraceful. And they've rightly said that on Article 19, the Indian Constitution guarantees the freedom of sp speech. I mean, expression of views will not make anyone unfit for the judiciary. An obvious thing, but it had to be reiterated with this uh, government after that disgraceful objection. And then look, sir, look at the objection for the Madras High Court. The, what yeah, the colleague look at John Satya. Look at the time that has elapsed since it was first broached by the Collegium of the High Courts. The Calcutta High Court, for example, uh, in December 9, in 2018, Supreme Court approves the proposal in July 2019. Then the Department of Justice refers back uh, after two years exactly two years, 23rd July 2021, and in respect, uh, and, and so on. In every case, they are not just delaying, they are filibustering. They are sending back and forth. The law is what, you know, is on, on the question of appointments uh, to judges of the, at, the, at this level, uh, it's very clear the judgments of the Supreme Court of India, and that is what the law is. That's what hmm. the binding law and I would say they are in contempt of court in uh, just defying uh, uh, what, what, the, what the law, in, in, in the judgment, and therefore the law clearly lays down, law of the land. And I think it's time that the Supreme Court cracked the whip. That they made it clear. And, I, and, and in the concluding paragraph, uh, they've said that in view of the above, the collegium resolves to return the file for processing the recommendations, plural, for appointment of uh, uh, Sri Amitesh Banerjee and Sakya Sen as judges of the Calcutta High Court expeditiously. Hmm. I think in a, and this will apply to every case and I hope in future the Supreme Court will not tolerate this kind of behavior, disgraceful behavior by uh, the Department of Justice or the law, whoever is responsible for it. But what we are seeing is uh, that we could, uh, have, we could have a reason, uh, you know, rational criticism of the collegium system. It's not been transparent. Should judges appoint themselves? Hmm. But what is the alternative? A lot of people have, I know, people who I respect have criticized the collegium system. But what is the alternative? Do you want uh, the go government, such as the present government, or, or a government that uh, did the emergency? Uh, in those days, they talked about, you know, I want to be even handed on it. The, Cong the Congress under Indira Gandhi, they talked of, uh, you know, a committed judiciary, yeah. what committed to the uh, agenda of the government, the elected government, yeah. that is a political party, uh, yeah. and so on. So we have to be even handed about it. But that, I think, those couple of judgments where judges took the power, snatched the power, if you like, the Supreme Court, to appoint. Judges, judges took the power to appoint themselves. But what is the alternative? Especially as you have statements like this from the vice president. One of the first things it does after taking office is to attack. Is to the make judiciary. a statement which is completely baseless that the uh, parliament is supreme. Even a first year law student knows. Parliament is not supreme in the Indian, in the Indian constitutional system. The constitution is supreme. And a law enacted by parliament can be struck down by a high court or by the Supreme Court and so on. And uh, even to amend the constitution, uh, there are restraints, there are qualifications on the power of parliament to take forward the, amend, uh, the uh, amendment, the constitutional amendment. In some cases, at least half the number of state legislatures will have to assent or, or ratify uh, the amendment and so on. It's so clearly it's not supreme. Then the vice president attacks the basic structure of the constitution, which is derived but, from. Another but I, I just want to draw your attention towards uh, what's what has been happening uh, as far as uh, 
you know, judiciary is concerned uh, since 2014, ever since uh, Prime Minister Modi took over, uh, within three months, they wanted to implement uh, the National Judicial Appointments Commission, which was struck down by the Supreme Court. Uh, there have been consistent attempts by the by the union government to control judiciary, or it appears to be like that, because uh, even now the argument uh, that the law minister put forth is that uh, they want a la larger say in judicial appointments. How do you yeah. see this uh, argument that's uh, coming from the union government? Because they want to pack the judiciary. It's very clear. It's not a secret. And I think uh, they make it very clear. Uh, and what kind of objections are these? Somebody criticized the prime minister uh, or, or shared a tweet uh, or something on, a, on the prime minister when this man was an advocate. And that is an objection uh, uh, here. Or somebody is gay and you don't like it, although uh, the law is very clear on that. Uh, uh, so I think... Uh, it's very clear they want to pack the judiciary with people who think uh, along their lines, which is the, and support basically the Hindutva ideology and the Hindu Rastra project, or at least not stand in the way. They want a substantial uh, proportion of the higher judiciary to be made up of such judges. That is not in question. It's made as clear as uh, day uh, about what they want. And that is the whole purpose First, the vice president filing these missiles, and then the law minister constantly taunting the judiciary. So, what kind of response? On a, on a daily basis, and this yeah. has been happening on a daily basis. Yes. So, I think uh, it's a very good response by the Supreme Court, and uh, I commend the Supreme Court and particularly these three judges, these three senior most judges, for taking uh, for for being taking an upstand, you know, for being. Up, not just upright, but being, uh, you know, meeting them more than halfway, and uh, meeting these objections, and really taking the the issue to the court of the government. What do you say but, but, to this? And and you you shall not delay unreasonably from now on. That's let's see if that's going to be implemented. Okay, like you pointed out, uh, collegium system is not uh, the perfect system. Judges cannot appoint judges is also one of the arguments that uh, uh, many uh, put forth. Uh, so in this uh, particular case, uh, you know, the entire collegium system is uh, shrouded in secrecy. What happens in the collegium? What kind of this is the first time we are seeing, uh, you know, what kind of objections have been raised or what is the pushback that the Supreme Court uh, collegium is, uh, uh, you know, um, are taking what kind of stand uh, the Supreme Court collegium is taking in this matter. So like you said, uh, there is no perfect, uh, you know, uh, procedure or there is whatever we have, we go ahead with that. Uh, but in this case, do you think that, uh, you know, the Supreme Court has been very selective in this approach because there have been cases where uh, names have been, uh, you know, uh, suggested, but uh, nothing has happened or uh, even the objections of the government have not come into public. So in this case, there is a criticism that the collegium has been... Uh, Selective. I suppose not in such on such matters, not everything can be made public because sometimes they'll be, you know, otherwise they can't have a proper discussion. Suppose there could be a sharp, uh, you know, exchange uh, on difference of opinion. And these things happen in any any close, you know, body, even in a friendly way. But they they, they become they they argue vehemently and so on. So not every detail need to come out, but basically it has to be transparent. Which is why the collegium system was so vulnerable, the Supreme Court was so vulnerable on this count because everyone said nobody knows what the criteria are. Nobody knows why AP, just as AP Shah was, was not appointed to the Supreme Court. There can only be rumors. I, I don't want to name current people I think who should be on the Supreme Court right now. Outstanding judges of the high courts or chief justices who should be there, who should have been there yes, last year or the year before. And yet they have not reached this position. I want to know why. So well, well, this should be transparent in a reasonable way. I'm not saying every little detail, every little squabble, if you like, because sometimes these things happen. People raise their voices. They, they can be sharp in such uh, exchanges. And that's uh, it happens in, in professional discussions. Uh, but uh, we want to know what these grounds are. And this is, I think, an excellent start. I wouldn't say it's selective yet. But uh, I hope they will, this will be made consistent practice. So like this kind of, uh, this kind of release, 
But this was really because uh, the, the, the law minister began to taunt and goad the Supreme Court of India. And I think they, they should punish the people involved for contempt of court. This is where contempt of court, you know, we, we object to uh, criminal contempt. Uh, when, uh, when you say something scandalizing the court or, uh, uh, you know, the judiciary, they say, you know, all kinds of, because it's very vague. But here is something that is very specific. If you disobey the order of a court, then you are justly liable to for contempt. You should be punished for contempt, or at least be summoned to the Supreme Court uh, and uh, made to and given a dressing down and see whether you improve uh, and so on. So I think uh, this is a very good start, and I wish uh, this process well because now, the fair, as you say, the first time. They have been transparent. Otherwise, rumors, leaks, this is what's been happening. Unverified yeah. information or source-based information comes to us. Uh, that, They'll that, that some, 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 Incidentally, that's a disease for the Indian media and also the international media that uh, all kinds of things can be attributed to unnamed sources. The moment you give confidential status, anonym, anonymity to a source, then there is no restraint on the journalist. Sometimes the journalist can invent uh, or exaggerate what the source said because he, you know, the source is not named, and you're not accountable for uh, that information. So I think uh, that sort of thing happens when they're not you're not transparent. Okay, this like you matter. said, uh, this is a yeah. matter where they have to be transparent. Like in you a, said, uh, you know, in a, reasonable has... way, in a reasonable way, not absolutely transparent. For example, if you consider all kinds of problems, some intelligence report that comes about this person who's, who's under consideration. I don't think everything needs to be published, but uh, something like this. Right, sir. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us, uh, you know, sharing your opinion, thoughts on uh, multiple issues. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Ram. Thank you. Thank you. It's good that you had me here.